Okay, so this is part two. I decided to split the video because it was kind of long. And I know people in this day is a, they're in a rush. So I think it was more convenient to split and hopefully it gives you a little more time to be able to watch it separately. Again, um, this this is the whole training, the part one. I shared two of the articles, um, actually part one, I'm sorry. And it was about how there's a shift happening in some housing market. Just look at the inventory. I also shared a second article. And that was actually uh, what's housing market predictions 2024 and uh, in prices, um, when would it be affordable for 2024? Okay. So anyhow, hopefully you can jump into the, the first part. And uh, if you have any comments, uh, share what's happening in your state. I'd love to hear it. What's happening? I mean, what, how, kind of, what kind of changes are you seeing in your city uh, compared to just a year ago, 12 months ago? I love to hear your comments because it does help me to understand because like I say, I'm in Florida. I know what's happening here, but uh, other states, I think they're going through some changes too. Um, and I think so. Um, and I think the most important thing is that we'll share, you know, among us, what what's really the reality in, uh, in, in, in you know what, you're local. So you know what's happening there, right? So uh, please feel free to um, to share. I, I really, uh, I will appreciate that. Okay. Anyhow, take care. And like I said, this is part two of um, the real estate predictions. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, no. Do not buy a house in this year, 2024. I think that there's not going to be a crash. I don't want to do any clickbaits like a lot of people do in YouTube. I'm not like that, but I'm going to give you the facts and I'm going to give you and I'm going to share articles that I have just come across that I think are extremely important for anyone out there who's desperately seeking to buy a house. I don't think that 2024 is the right year, maybe next year, especially towards 2026. But right now, I'm going to share an important article that I think really is going to be valuable to your time. So let's go ahead and dive in right now. And it's called over here. Uh, we're having a lot of issues with people who are retired. We have problems with new, new, you know, first time Gen Zs. They're trying to get into it. Uh, millennial generations, they're trying to get it, you know, to buy even the very first house because maybe you want to start your family. And this is not feasible, what's happening right now. But like I said, be patient. I, I This really change is happening. It's not a matter of when, it's really happening. Okay, so what we used to hear in the past, or oh, who knows when, when it's already happening. Okay, it's been going. The problem with real estate, and and, and I want to just kind of briefly explain this. Um, it it it's just that there's a, a the, the, we always in the rears in the cycles of real estate. So there's a lag. So every time we look at numbers, sometimes we have to wait like three months to six months to really see the results and what's happening in the real estate market. You know, so. Here's another map. This is really good. This one is active housing inventory. Look what it says here. From sales compare to pre-pandemic levels shift between June of 2019 to June of 2024. Here we go. There we go. Look at Texas. Texas, five-year change. Okay, one-year change, 42%. That's how the inventory has increased there. Look at Florida, 71%. So, you know, the truth is, I'm going to go ahead and jump to another, uh, I want to share real quick with you another um, article that I found very interesting. Like I say, I'm very picky about these articles. I just, I get it when I think they're really good coming from the right source. And I always say that in, in, in every, uh, you know, video I do, because there's a lot of information. There's just misinformation um, and, 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 and I can imagine why consumers are getting so confused because there, there's so much information there. But like I said, before I jump in, I wanted to show you, see, at the end of June, three states that had to return to pre-pandemic inventory level of 2019 was Texas. There you go. Texas, Florida, Idaho. Boy, Idaho. That was another one. And look at this. Not too far behind is Tennessee. Colorado, Washington, and Arizona, you know, so we, we now it's the Sun Belt and the Mountain West that got bombarded. Everybody was running, obviously, from COVID, and look what happened, uh, you know, and now I see a lot of regret, like I said, especially, again, I'm talking about Florida because that's where I'm at, and the people that I get to talk to locally and from different cities, 
And I can tell you right now, they, they, some of them are very unhappy. I have met quite a few people who came here and they already have moved out. I mean, as last year, beginning of this year, they're getting out because they're saying, Liz, there's no way. We pay a high price for, for a house, okay, or even a condo. And then the insurance have went up here in Florida by more than 30 40%. It's outrageous. It's just outrageous. And then on top of that, the property taxes, not forget about that. As the value goes up, even if you have or consider homestead, which luckily uh, Florida, and I know that Texas also has it, um, you know, the campus to, I think it's like a 3%. Uh, so even if it keeps going up like it has happened in the last four years, anybody who has their primary residency, they're able to cap it at that amount. But if not, let's say you had a vacation home or you purchase maybe, you know, another property for a family member or or whatever was the purpose. You know, they tell you 10 percent cap on, you know, investment property. I don't think that's even true because I'm telling you from experience, <laughs> my my property taxes from one of you know, the rentals. I mean, when skyrocket and not compared to uh, insurance. And I'm going to do another separate video, maybe about manufactured home, because now we have a serious problem with them. No insurance company, the one that was actually covering here in Florida, has decided to cut off. Uh, so we have a really bad problem with that because that's the only other affordability that we have, which is another major issue. So anyhow, just not to make this video very long, I wanted to jump here. Hopefully you can see this housing market predictions for 2024, when will home prices will be affordable again? And that's the big question that we all ask, right? Housing market predictions for 2024, when will home prices be affordable again? Well, I think they're gonna correct. It's already happening. The inventory is starting to increase. Prices are starting to come down. And do I think that if they start decreasing the interest, the pro that the houses can go up higher? No, I don't think so. I don't think that that's going to affect them. I don't. I could be wrong. Like I said, I'm human. I could be wrong. But I don't think that because it has increased so drastically that if you were say to me, Liz, you know what? It only increased 10%. We're talking about areas that increase 40 to 50%. I mean, Miami, uh, last time I checked last year before the this, you know, inventory started increasing, they went up by 50 Five percent. Tampa area went up by more than I think it was like forty eight percent. Jacksonville, which I'm sure you have heard, had became very, very hot during the period, you know, of this, uh, you know, pandemic. Another one. I mean, you could buy houses in Jacksonville for less than one hundred seventy five thousand dollars. That same house they're trying to sell it for two fifty. From where people are not making that kind of salary. It's not sustainable. Who's going to pay the landlord if the, the the actual consumers cannot even afford it? So I talked to you know investment investors about this because this is important that you need to take to, into account, especially because you have so much competition. <gasps> well, who? Well, new builders. Look what they're doing. They decrease all the rent and everything as as early as this year, and probably that trend is going to go into next year. Okay, and it's going to happen because. They have no one to rent. I mean, do you want to make some money or you want to make zero? I think you know the answer to that. So I'm telling, telling you know, trying to advise because it's one of the things I do. Like I said, I am an accountant and I have specialized in the niche or niche of real estate. And I can tell you right now, the way I see things based on all this article, it's just giving you the facts of what's happening. Okay. So here it says experts insist that the housing market will improve despite, despite high mortgage rates out of the reach of home prices, sluggish sales transaction, and, and dampening demand. I really think, like I said, that there's going to be a delay, which is what I just said a couple of minutes ago. Okay. I really don't think at any given time that even here says, meanwhile, the U.S. home prices remain unaffected by persistent high mortgage rates, hosting an annual 6.3 gain. So this is what's really interesting and part of this article that I wanted to share with you is that you will think, well, usually when interests go up, then home prices go down. That's how it has always worked, by the way, for the last hundred years that I think they've been tracking the real estate market. All right. And the same thing with the stock market. Usually this is what happens. But this time was very different. <laughs> so I think this is why it has taken us by surprise 
um, even by me, for the fact that usually this is how the normal cycle works. I think due to the pandemic, like I said, it was such a burst of people running from really, you know, COVID that they just wanted to run from reality. And they thought that, okay, if I move to another state, it's going to be better and so on. And I think there was such an obsession to just have the freedom and to be able to have a different life, right? Because all of us, I mean, we were that close, um, unfortunate to, to, you know, diseasing. And and I think the fact that so many people passed, it's, it's quite sad. Uh, you know, a lot of people starting to forget what happened just four years ago. I haven't. It's very vivid in my mind. And I think we lost millions of people that, um, that you know, if it happened because of the virus, they will still be here with us. Um, so um, it's it's quite sad. But other than that, I mean, I'm looking at this as shopping for new homes, find out how much you can afford today. Here's another issue, affordability. How can somebody, they say in the right now for you to afford the average Home price across the United States about I think four hundred four hundred thirty thousand dollars. I have a hard time even saying that number. For you to qualify with a single income, you probably at least need at least a hundred twenty thousand dollars. At least, and that's forget about you having huge, you know, debt ratio. Meaning, if you have a big car payment, if you have another home, and it's not rented, obviously, to upset the the you know the ratio. Um, if you have high credit cards, look at what's happening with credit cards, right? Huge debt. People are the consumers right now. If you haven't watched my other video prior to this one, I was talking about the U.S. debt that's out of control. And I share a lot of buyer information there if, you, if you're interested in looking at that. So I just want to, because I just feel like I said, that people are very confused right now. And I wanted to just share a little bit of my insight. I think I know what I'm talking about. And I think the most important thing is listening to people that we're reading charts. We're looking at these articles and we've been in it. We've been through the experience and we've seen a repetition. Is it going to be a crash? Probably not. And again, the only reason is because, again, the inventory, even though it's increasing, it's not yet in those pre-pandemic. And like the article said, the other one that I was sharing, it, should, it really said it could take up to 2026. So please, buyers, be patient. I think the time is around the corner. If you waited this long, I think it would be smart enough to do it. I also believe that there's going to be a lot of new programs from the government, from the counties, from the cities. Look into that because that might be a really big favor for you to look into it because there's a lot of grants out there available. Um, I know the VAs have phenomenal benefits. Um, in just something recently came out on the news too. Uh, so you might want to dig into that, um, which I think was like 50%. VA has a special grant that it will pay towards your home. So look into that. Um, I think there's a few videos about that already up there on YouTube. So if you want to look at that uh, and get more details, I'm not going to show that this in, in this video. But um, anyhow, I hope this information, ha, you know, somehow is giving you some insight of what really is happening and what I see, like I said, and it's proven, you know, support there as I'm sharing the articles. Inventory is definitely increasing. There's no doubt. Um, I think that what's most important is to be a little bit patient, to be able to say, okay, fine. Uh, you know what? If I waited this long, I can wait a little longer. And if you're on the other side as a seller, then you know what? Correcting your price, again, it's not 2021, and be a little bit more realistic. And if you really want to sell, sell it, sell it. And this is what I'm going to tell sellers, okay? You have different options, Okay. Yes, we all love cash. Of course you do. You want to close in two weeks, yada, yada. That's all wonderful. Um, but if you can, and your home is still worth a certain value, why not think about creative finance? Seriously, what is creative finance? Let's, well, it's very simple. If you own a free and clear a title to your property, go ahead and sell it. And owner's finance, give the, the, the next person the opportunity to buy your house. Not only you will probably get your prize, but all oh, the highest price actually for your home, but you give an opportunity for family or individual to come in and, and purchase that property. See what I'm saying? And if you have a mortgage, no problem. 
someone can make an, you know, they can assume your loan. They can go ahead and take over your payments. Okay. And that's what you probably have heard a lot. What's called subject to, which is really taking over your monthly payments and probably giving you a little money of your equity. Okay. And also taking over, like I said, the payments, insurance, everything else. And then you don't have to worry about it because you can move on to your next property if that's you know what your plans are. So sellers, be creative and 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 be open to those kind of options because if you want to get the highest price, then oh, I just want to tell sellers if you want to get the highest price, then creative finance is probably your best solution, not the cash. The cash is always going to be a, a you know low ball, and it's just the way it works. It's convenience. It's 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 selling it quickly, right? It's not having to deal with banks' financials and appraisers and inspections. So you're getting rid of all that, cutting all that and all the noise and not having to show your house, right? And sell it in a cash basis. But you are going to need to discount maybe 30 and 40% off. I mean, that's just the way it works with cash. Now, if you're patient, like I said, you're willing to, you know, sell in creative finance, then you're probably going to get a bigger, you know, amount for, for your property, but you're going to need to do in monthly payments. So um, that's just another, you know, option there. I want to, to talk about it because I think it's important, especially, like I said, some sellers are still in a lot of denial. I hate to say it, uh, but this is reality. It is, you know, 2024. Um, and right now prices aren't correcting. Like I said, the more inventory comes in, the more competition you're going to have. It's simple. Um, and I'm just being, you know, really upfront. Uh, I, some of you might like it, you might not like it. And I'm just very upfront about it. Um, but I think this is the best options right now for sellers. If they want to get the maximum price is to be creative finance or whether you offer owner finance because you paid off good for you, or you do, like I said, what's called subject to, and just let someone else, uh, you know, take over your payment. Um, either way, if you need any help, please reach out to me. Um, I have quite a good, uh, you know, team here um, that we do that. We specialize in that. We have attorneys, we have title companies, um, and that's what we do. And mostly we bind across big states, uh, especially here in Florida, but also in Georgia and maybe even in Texas. Uh, but right now, primarily we do Florida. So if you're interested, reach out to me. And if not, I hope this information has been valuable one way or another. And, um, and like I said, at this point, really, just consider, um, like I said, that option for sellers and for buyers, like I said, just a little bit more impatient patience. And I think it's going to pay off big, big times. Okay. Um, inventory is going up. So everything's looking good. All right. Anyhow, Take care. This is Liz again. And uh, if it will to your time, you like to uh, watch my next video. Like I said, I'm going to be talking a little more details about different aspects of what's happening uh, with the real estate. Uh, again, that is one of my niches. Anyhow, thank you. I appreciate you. And I hope, like I said, you found this information to be uh, quite uh, valuable one way or another. Take care. Bye-bye.